Hello, today let's talk about uh, how to design a beam. We are going to design a rectangular uh, beam, a single reinforced beam to BS8110. Okay, so let's start with the question. A simple, a simply supported rectangular beam of 7 meters span carries uh, a characteristic dead load including self weight of uh, 9. Uh, uh, of including self weight GK and then imposed load QK uh, of about 12 and uh, 7 as you can see here okay the beam uh, dimensions are breadth of that much and uh, an effective depth of so much okay effective depth is from the top to the middle uh, to the center of uh, reinforcement at the bottom there okay now when we say fcu this is the strength of the concrete then fy is the strength of the reinforced steel okay so if you are doing it to bs 8110 the first thing that they need you to do is to calculate what is called um the ultimate load some books denote it as n but this book denotes it as a w okay so you say 1,4 times gk which is gk in our case was um gk was a 12 okay then qk is the live load which was an 8 so you just multiply this one this is simple mathematics you come up with this load okay the reason why we put these uh this uh, partial safety factors that we multiply which is 1.4 is so that the structure is not overloaded if it was a case of uh, pure mathematics then we would uh, just deal with the dead load and live load as it comes what would happen is that if there will be an additional an additional load to the structure the structure would fall simple mathematics if you only can carry 10 bags then we add 11 the thing will fall so in order to avoid that that part we just had to put partial safety factors okay then the next thing is to calculate what is called the design moment. The design moment is the moment that is created, that is generated by the load on top. Okay. So this moment is being resisted by the beam itself. So how do we do that? Uh, simple formula that we use, we say the, the, the UDL, which is the ultimate, okay, in this case 29.6. Okay, multiplied by the length of the beam squared divided by 8. This is for a simply supported beam. Now, when we multiply, we come up with this moment. So, we are going to design a beam to carry a moment of this size. So, how do we do that? We actually, first of all, we have to check the ultimate moment, uh, moment of resistance for the beam. The ultimate moment of resistance is the maximum moment that a beam section can carry. So, for you to do that, you multiply 0.156 multiplied by fcu is the strength of of concrete as you can see here okay then the other number uh, b is the breadth of the beam and d is the depth of the section so we if you multiply these things you multiply by 10 to the power minus 6 so that you change it from newtons per newton millimeters which is a unit uh, that we have to equate with the other one which is the design moment which is in kilonewton a meter so we multiply by 10 to the power minus 6 to achieve that so we come up with this value here then this value since it is greater than the moment that the structure is going to face under the worst ever possible uh, situation it means that this beam is sufficient okay so you can reduce the section a bit and still come up with a number that is uh, above this one it means that the beam is okay okay so let's just look it, let, uh, let's just continue a single uh, since the moment the M, 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 U is greater than m that means that the moment of resistance which is this one mu is greater than the moment that the structure is going to face so it means that the thing is okay and then it's singly reinforced and then we continue if this was the other way around it would be doubly reinforced or impossible so we are not going to focus on that let's just focus on this part for today okay let's continue 
now we find uh, this value k the value k now is useful so that we count we, we can calculate what is called the lever arm which is something that we will be looking forward to, to be calculating uh, in future by future i'm talking about today okay so k is when you take the moment that you the, our design moment which is this one okay okay this case we want to change it to newtons per square millimeter so we multiply it with 10 to the power 6 when we wanted to change it backwards we multiply it by 10 to the power minus 6 as you still remember when we were looking for the moment of resistance now we want to look for a moment that is in newtons per square millimeter okay so we multiply with this by 10 to the power minus 6 then this one you just it's a matter of copying and pasting if it's fcu you copy the value for fcu it's in newtons per square millimeter so you just write it as is this one we have changed it so that it goes to newtons per millimeter okay this one is in millimeters make sure that these values are all in millimeters if you multiply all these things you come up with a value here this value uh, is you is usually less than this number here the reason uh, is uh, this check you can do it at this level but we are not going to do it since we have already done it by calculating the moment of resistance okay so this is the k value now when you have the k value you use the k value to calculate the lever arm which is in millimeters lever arm is going to d which is the depth of the section to the center of reinforcement plus 0 0.5 plus the square root of this uh, few of this combination of numbers now before you substitute this part here you have to calculate uh, the part without the d first okay so what is going to happen is that number should be less than uh, 0 0.95 times d so instead of using this value you multiply it by 0 0.95 times d you come up with the value which is this one then you multiply everything uh, substituting this with the real value then you come up with the number this this number should be less than the 0 0.95 times d so since that is has been made then you you have an okay to proceed to calculate the area of reinforcement in this case the area of recent reinforcement for the steel that is going to go to the bottom is going to you're going to take that very moment that we we call the design moment in this case it was 181.3 newtons per square newtons yeah kilo newton meters then you multiply it by 10 to the power 6 so that you convert it to newton millimeters then you divide it with 0 0.85 this is an old bs that is this value in today uh, in the latest version of the bs you multiply it by 0 0.95 times fy this is the strength of reinforcement uh, which is 460 in, in this case it's 500 but in the new bs it's 460 that is the cap okay then you multiply it with the value that you got for z here then you come up with the area of reinforcement that is required okay once you come up with this area of reinforcement uh you we have a table that has area of reinforcement and the number of bars and the diameter of bars okay so the table is like this one uh, we want to look for a number that is uh, above 1078 okay so as you can see 1078 bars are normally three or less for beams you don't have to use all this depending with the width of the beam so if we are left we are left with three or less we are going to use this column in this one okay so we are looking for a number that is less than 10 78 this one is greater than 1078 this one is less okay so this number is enough reinforcement but this is too little you cannot use this one because there's a probability of failure the thing might fail if it is waste to its waste if it is loaded to its worst case scenario so you will be able you you'll be supposed to settle for this one which is um two 25 millimeter diameter bars okay as you can see here after looking at such numbers they settled at this number let's see a total cross-sectional area of so much this one okay these are 20 millimeter bars four of them they decided to use four bars 
so if you are using four bars here you have to use four 20 millimeter bars with this one this one is more economic this one was going to be a waste of material since it was going to cost the client more but if you use this one which is the most economic it will be okay okay these are called design charts that you'll be using okay this is how you calculate for the reinforcement of a bar in bs8110 thank you for your time if you'd like to learn more about this one or you'd like the, a copy of this book or a copy of the design charts just write your email in the description below and then i'll send you on email thank you